equals touch location in view self. So now what we've done here is we've called to lo lo the location in view me method. We're going to send that to our touch. And depending on what view is passed in in the parameter here, this touch object will return a point of the location in that view that the user touched. So of course, we want to find out where the user touched in this custom view here. So we're going to pass in self. So but what we're saying is, touch object, where did the user touch in this view? And it's going to return a point containing x and y coordinates of exactly where the user touched. Now, we're going to create a, a CG rect object. main touch label frame. Now what we're doing here is we're getting the current frame of the main touch label. So you can change how the boundaries, the frame of a UI label and its origin simply by modifying its frame or giving it a new frame. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing its current frame by accessing the, its frame property. And this CG rect is a struct containing two more structs. So if, let's, let's take a look at the documentation here, because it might seem a little bit confusing at this point. You can see here, a CG rect is a struct which contains two more structs, one struct that contains origin and one struct that contains size. Now, we're not going to modify size, because we want the size of this label to stay the same size it already is. So we're basically grabbing its current frame. We're going to change the, its origin, or where it is, and then set it back to itself, or set it back to its frame. So let's change its origin here. Equals this frame. We're going to change the origin. CG point make. Now we're going to use a function, a C, C function called CG point make, which returns a CG point struct containing X and Y points x location. So now what we're doing here is we're passing in as these parameters. The CG point make function contain, ca, takes two parameters. The first one is the x coordinate of this structure, and the second one is the y coordinate of the structure. We're creating a new frame that contains the origin, the x, an origin that is the x and y coordinates of the last touch. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to set the touch label we're going to set its frame back to that frame that we just created. So let's go through this again because it that all might have confused you. So there was a lot going on there. First, we grab the touch object, where the a UI touch instance, which contains information about where the user touched. Then we created a CG point, calling it location of point, of where the user touched the view. Then we grab the current frame of our main touch label. Again, a CG rect is a struct containing an origin, x and y coordinates of that object, and CG size, the size of that object, height and width. Then we change the origin of that previous frame of our touch label. We gave it a new origin, which is the origin of where the user touched, the location at which the user touched. And then last, we set the main touch label's frame back to the new frame, or the modified frame. So now, Let's build this and see what we've got so far. If we touch on the screen, you can see that the touch label moves to wherever we touch the screen. Now let's make it so that if we hold down and drag, it follows us still. So all we need to do is just copy this code from the touches began method to the touches moved method. Now if we build, you can see that after we touch and drag, it follows. So now we're going to make this a little bit cooler. We're going to actually add some animation. So we're going to make it so that when the touches begin, instead of just instantaneously reappearing at where the touches began, we're going to make this uh, touch label slide to where the user touched. So UI view 
begin animation. This is a class method, nil. Con uh, begin animations, nil. Context, nil. Uh, doing animations with the iPhone is very simple. So what we do here is we use a class method, a UI view class method, begin animations, nil, context, nil. And what, so now any uh, interface changes we make will be animated inside. Now what we have to do is underneath all of our changes, we call to another class method, UI view commit animations. And now all the animations will be done. So let's build this. You can see that if we click, it slides. Now, of course, you can change some animation properties like the duration, set animation duration. We'll set it to one full second. So this should happen pretty slowly. Let's see how that works out. You can see that uh, responding to touches at this point is very simple with the iPhone SDK. Uh, it, it didn't require a whole lot of code, uh, maybe maybe some code you've never seen before. But once you get the hang of it, it's it makes a lot of sense, and you can it's very very powerful, and you can do a lot with it. And as you probably have seen in the App Store, a lot of developers have already begun doing many things with touch response with the iPhone. So uh, I'm Anthony from MyCoTeacher.com. That concludes this lesson on responding to touches. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in future lessons.